In this video, we're talking about the War of 1812. Now, the War of 1812 often gets maybe, well, I don't know about ignored, but downplayed, not a lot of attention paid to it. It was pretty short, not a lot of really famous things. Well, one really famous thing, but not a whole lot of really famous things that have entered into pop culture, things like that. I came out of that, but we do need to know about it. It might be on your test if we're going to teach social studies and history, then it's also important to know about this. So here are the facts, here's the context that you're going to need to know about the War of 1812. War of 1812 started in June of 1812. And it ended January 1815. So it was pretty short. It was between the U.S. versus Great Britain. USA versus Great Britain. Now, some historians have called the, uh, the War of 1812 a continuation or part two of the Revolutionary War. And I, you're not going to get asked that, but it gives us a little bit of context. It was, it was, pretty, it was uh, not too long after the Revolutionary War, right? 1776, so 1783, 17 years plus 12 years, 29 years after, 29 years after the Revolutionary War. So not too long after that, might have been, oh, there's certainly people still alive, might have been some lingering resentments. I don't know, we'd have to look that up. It's not going to be on your test. But that's why this was called the, by some people, the, uh, the continuation or part two of the Revolutionary War. Now, why did it start? Where did it happen? What was the outcome or what were the outcomes? Well, let me just first say that there was no winner. It just, the two countries fought for a while and then it just kind of stopped. And it stopped, technically ended now, technically, it ended, ended with the Treaty of Ghent, it's over in Europe, in uh, December 1814. So why did I write that it ended January 1815? Well, because the last battle of the War of 1812 was fought in January of 1815, a month after the treaty was signed because communication is was slow. So the treaty ended in 1814, but the last battle was a month later, 18, 1815. And there really was no winner. England or Great Britain won some big victories, and the U.S. won some big victories. So both could claim, in a way, both could claim victory. And for various reasons, people in the U.S. claimed victory because of this, even though there wasn't any really clear winner to this, right? So that's important to know. So why did it start? What happened? Well, there's three issues. One was called, so why? One was impressment. Impressment. So what does that mean? Well... Here's the context. The context is that England and France had been at war since about 1803. Seems like England and France were at war all the time. They were at war, they weren't, they were, they weren't. They were at war a lot. Well, about 1803, they were at war again. And the U.S. stayed out of that fight. They had no business with that fight. They were neutral in that, in that war. Well... Great Britain and France had started stopping, stopping ships, capturing U.S. ships, looking for supplies. They, they didn't, war supplies, not regular, war supplies. They didn't want U.S. ships containing war supplies to go to the other countries. So France didn't want England to get war supplies sent by the U.S. And England didn't want France to get war supply sent by the U.S. So both countries were making a habit of stopping U.S. ships and looking for 
supplies. But the English, they, they increased that practice. They made it more intense. They started doing things that became really troublesome for the U.S. and made the U.S. really angry. They started to look for runaway sailors. So the British Navy, and we're, we're out here in the Pacific. Pacific's over here in the Atlantic, sorry. We're out here in the Atlantic, and there's U.S. ships, right? And the English warships would stop U.S. ships out here in the ocean, and they would search through the ship, look at all the people, talk to the people, scour the ship, looking for runaway British sailors, right? They would look for runaways. Well, if they found them, they would take them back, take them off the, take them off the ship and put them back into the British Navy. They would make them go fight again. Well, sometimes U.S. citizens were caught up. So sometimes U.S. citizens were taken from U.S. ships and pressed into service. Impressment, they were pressed into service to go serve, to go fight for the British Navy. It got even worse, actually. The uh, English ships, the British warships, started to target U.S. Navy ships. And then they would essentially kidnap U.S. sailors, and they would press them, they would make them work, the American crews, they would make them work, I'm talking ships out here, they would make them work for the British Navy. So it went from just stopping, war, stopping ships, making sure that war materials weren't going to the other country. England started eventually, essentially kidnapping sailors, American sailors, who were in the Navy and making them fight for the British cause. So that was a real problem. So that's impressment. Right? Now the other is, is interference. Now, of course, this is connected. But it's really about inter, in, ah, if I can spell here, interference with shipping, with trade. So, of course, if they're stopping ships looking for war materials, if they're stopping other kinds of ships, even Navy ships, it's going to interfere with trade, and it did. The U.S. passed two acts to try to fight this to outlaw trade with Great Britain and France, the Embargo Act and the Non-Intercourse Act. This was uh, 1807 and 1809. It's on your notes. The problem with that was that hurt U.S. interests and businesses more than British businesses, but uh, that was just one of the reactions to this. So there was some interference with shipping and trade and commerce, okay? The third reason had to do with British military aid, or it was, it was British, yeah, military aid, military aid to Native Americans who lived right around here. Let's check out our map. Okay, remember we're, we're still early days here essentially just the 13 colonies. Now they had one, and we'll look at westward expansion later, but they had won all of this territory. Not that there were people in all this territory, but they had won it, and claims to it from the, from the British at the end of the Revolutionary War. So we had the 13 colonies over here on the side of the mountain range. Remember, this mountain range played, played a big role in the French and Indian War. Well, after that, there were still 13 colonies. After the Revolutionary War, it was mainly on this side, but the U.S. was given claims to this territory. Britain, they, they took away their claims. Right? Well, right around here, this was within U.S. territory, Right around Michigan, Ohio, Illinois, Indiana, in this area, uh, Great Britain was giving military aid to Native American groups, and the U.S. was worried that they were going to become a threat to 
to the United States. And they didn't like it, so they wanted that military aid to stop. So those were really the three big reasons for the, for the fight. Um, where were the battles? Well, they were kind of all over the place. You don't need to know the names of any particular battles. I'm just going to show you, and it's on your handout, I think. But I'll show you here, just so you get a sense of where it was. Okay, this is where it was. Remember, the Revolutionary War was fought, Revolutionary War was fought over here, mainly. But there were battles. It was mainly to the west. Right? Most of it was to the west. Uh, kind of here, upstate New York. There's some in Canada. There's a lot in Canada, actually. Where the battles were. So I kind of won. Kind of over here. Notice I'm not giving you exact locations. I'm just approximating just so you can get a sense of where these battles were. Over here in Michigan, Ohio. There was a pretty famous one in Washington, D.C. when the White House burned down, was, was burned down by British troops. The one uh, outside of Baltimore, that's where the Star Spangled Banner came from. After uh, the American troops defended Fort McHenry, Francis Scott Key wrote the, the words to the Star Spangled Banner. Just as an aside, I don't think you're going to get asked that. But just to give you a little bit more context, after that battle, that was a successful battle on the American side. Um, down here in Georgia, way down here. And the last battle, that battle I mentioned that happened uh, a month after, that was the Battle of New Orleans. Way down here in New Orleans. And there's also a blockade. This is important. Here, kind of a, you know, just out here in the ocean, there was a, write this, a blockade of, of shipping and trade by the British Navy. They weren't letting American ships go through. So most of the fighting, it was in Canada, in the Midwest, and a little bit in the South, right? Not a lot in the South. So that gives you a sense of where the fighting took place. Now, uh, what were the outcomes? Now, of course, we said that there was no clear winner. It just ended essentially for our purposes it just ended we don't need to know the details not for your test anyway but where were the outcomes well uh, one there was outcomes for the u.s we're talking outcomes for the u.s increased national pride national pride Because they had done well, they had stood up for themselves, meaning the U.S., the Army, the Navy, against Great Britain, the country that had been the enemy. There was increased manufacturing. Now, why would there be increased manufacturing? Why would the business, why would businesses in the U.S. start to make more stuff? Well, it's because of the blockade. At least in large part, it's because of the blockade. They couldn't trade with other countries. They couldn't buy goods made in other countries. They had to start making stuff themselves. Whatever it is, shirts and rifles and. All kinds of things. What, you know, whatever the goods are, they had to start making them themselves because they couldn't not they could not import them from other countries. So manufacturing increased because they had no other choice but for manufacturing to increase. And when we get to the Industrial Revolution, this is going to be a big factor in the Industrial Revolution and um, Moved to the factory system here in the U.S. after the War of 1812. That's going to give it a boost. That's going to give it a jump start. It will. Uh, the other outcome that's in the teaks is reduced resistance by Native Americans 
two settlement by the U.S. in the Midwest here. Why? Because they were given aid, Native American groups were given aid by the British government, and then that aid disappeared, and some Native American groups fought on the side of the British and lost. So the resistance to, uh, if you're a Native American, invasion by uh, white Americans mainly. If you're an American, resistance. It wasn't invasion, it was, it was settlement. It's got a lot of people and they gotta go somewhere. Right? So there it's a point of view. You're not gonna get acid on the test, but the, the resistance was, was weakened because of this war and that's really it there's uh, there's not a whole lot that you're going to get asked hopefully that gives you a little bit of context and um it'll help you if you are asked any questions about this on your exam now let's go on to the next topic